Hello friends, this video on Adolescence Part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now, during this phase, that is during adolescence, there are some cyclic changes which take place in females, which we are often referring as menstrual cycle. So, let us try to understand these cyclic changes. What do we mean by cyclic changes? That means changes which occur periodically. So, some periodical changes keep on taking place in a female once she has entered into her reproductive phase. So, let us see what kind of changes are they. So following changes are quite evident in females, one is cyclic changes in ovaries, the ovaries undergo a periodic change. So one change would be the cyclic changes in the ovaries, the ovaries undergo a lot of change periodically. And the second is the hormones because hormones play the most important role in females. So the level of hormones also decide a lot of changes which take place in the ovaries. So what is menstrual cycle because we you have seen me often talking about menstrual cycle in females. So these are cyclic changes in females during reproductive phase. So throughout the reproductive phase of a female these menstrual cycle will continue. Now when menstrual cycle stops the female is no more in her reproductive phase. So for reproduction menstrual cycle is a must. So now we will spend some time understanding what exactly is menstrual cycle. So let us see. Now, based on whatever we have studied in our previous lesson, we know that what happens is every 28 days there is one egg which gets released from either of the ovaries. So you have two ovaries. Let us suppose this is the right ovary and this is the left ovary. So from any of these egg ovaries, one egg will be released into the fallopian tube every 28 days. So this is the ovary, this is the fallopian tube. So I have discussed all these things in our previous lesson. So anyways, so this process has to happen every 28 days. Now we know that inside this ovary there are many ova, many egg cells which are present even before the baby is born, since that time the female inside her ovary has so many ova. But the maturation of this ova starts only during puberty. Now from, from puberty, every 28 days there is one ovum which gets matured and gets released from the ovary into the fallopian tube. And and this process of release of an ovum from the ovary into the fallopian tube is known as ovulation. So this process is called ovulation. So you can see here this is the egg cell which gets released from ovary into fallopian tube. Now this unfertilized egg remains alive for 24 hours after ovulation. So after it has been released into the fallopian tube, this egg, it is not yet fertilized because for fertilization a sperm needs to come and fuse with it. So this unfertilized egg will remain alive for 24 hours. Now two things can happen. So there are two options. So let us see what are the two options which are available for this, for what can happen to this unfertilized egg. So one option is that the sperm comes and fertilizes it within 24 hours. If the sperm is unable to fertilize it, is fertilize it within 24 hours, then no fertilization will happen. Now, if the sperm fertilizes it, then what will happen? Then what happens is what we call as pregnancy. Then the woman will become pregnant because the sperm and the ovum will fuse together. Fertilization will result in the formation of zygote and the zygote will later develop to become an embryo and the embryo will get transplanted into the uterus. This embryo will get transplanted into uterus. So this portion is uterus. So this bag like structure which you see that is uterus. So the embryo will get implanted into uterus and it will remain there for 9 months and finally when it becomes totally matured it is delivered as a baby. So that is the first option. What is the second option? The second option is that the sperm does not fertilize it. So in that case, what is going to happen? Because in that case, no zygote is being formed. So let us see what would happen in that case. Now, 
whether the sperm will fertilize it or it will not fertilize it but the uterus has to prepare itself to receive the fetus because in case fertilization happens then what is going to happen the zygote is going to come develop itself and then the developing embryo is going to come to the uterus so the uterus should be capable enough to support the zygote or to support the developing embryo so for that purpose how uterus prepares itself the inner lining of the uterus which is called endometrium so where is endometrium this inner lining of the endo uterus is called endometrium the outer lining is called perimetrium this one and the middle lining is called myometrium so these are the three linings but most important of these is the endometrium so endometrium is richly supplied with blood vessels and it starts thickening itself so that if the zygote comes here so it will get implanted in the uterus so the endometrium should be able to give it a cushion like feeling it should also be able to provide it with all the nutrition so that that is why endometrium prepares itself so endometrium gets thickened now let us suppose if the first option holds true in that case the embryo comes and gets implanted so that is fine in case the second option holds true that means if fertilization doesn't take place if the sperm doesn't fertilize this egg so what will happen to the egg in that case no fertilization has taken place no fertilization would mean no zygote is formed so there is nothing which is going to come to the uterus and get implanted so now what should the uterus do with the thickened endometrium that is of no use so therefore the endometrium breaks now when the endometrium breaks what happens because endometrium is all vascular it is richly supplied with blood vessels so when it breaks all these blood get released through the vaginal opening and that comes out as bleeding through vagina and this bleeding is known as menstruation so this bleeding through vagina is called as menstruation now this menstruation takes place approximately 14 days after ovulation has taken place so let us suppose if this ovulation was the first step from where we started our discussion that is when the egg get released now as the egg get released from here the endometrium starts thickening here so endo the endometrium keeps on thickening so the endometrium will wait for 14 days to receive the zygote if it doesn't receive the zygote within 14 to 15 days then the endometrium will break down and there will be bleeding through the vagina and this is called as menstruation so I hope now the concept is clear that what is menstrual cycle and what is menstruation. Now you might ask that why this bleeding happens after every 28 days. That is because the process of ovulation happens every 28 days. Now let us say, we just for an example, let us suppose ovulation happened on the first of a month. So 1st January ovulation happened. So approximately after 14 or 15 days menstruation will start. So maybe on 15th of Jan menstruation started. Correct? Now again after, now on 1st ovulation happened. So this ovulation will again happen after 28 days. That means on 28th Jan again ovulation will happen. Correct? Now again ovulation will happen so that means again after 15 days so you add 15 on 28 so again menstruation will happen so let us say approximately on say 12th of January I mean 12th of February so on this date again menstruation will happen so since ovulation happens every 28 days therefore menstruation will also happen every 28 days because menstruation follows ovulation whenever ovulation happens after 14 to 15 days menstruation will happen so that is why it is a cyclic process and this menstrual cycle marks the reproductive phase in females so let us see how it marks the reproductive phase now there are different stages in the life cycle of a female now the period when menstruation starts is when the female enters into her puberty and when a female enters into her puberty or adolescence when she is 11 to 13 years old so this is the time when menstruation starts so the first time when menstrual cycle takes place or the start of menstruation is known as menarche 
So this is the term given to the start of menstrual cycle and then it continues for a couple of years. So every 28 days the menstrual cycle keeps happening. Now it is not always exact 28 days but yeah somewhere between 28 to 30. And then again a time comes when this entire process of menstruation stops and that happens when the female is 45 to 50 years old and this process and this stage is known as menopause. Menopause is like the last cycle of menstruation or the phase when menstruation has stopped happening. So that is called menopause. So between menarche and menopause is the reproductive phase of a female. So this whatever it has been marked in red that denotes the time period during which menstrual cycle happens in a woman and that also denotes the reproductive phase of a woman. So a woman can give birth to a new baby only during this phase. So that is important. And every time the menstrual cycle happens, it, I mean it starts, now how much bleeding will happen that depends upon the thickness of the endometrium. So if the thickness is very much, then a lot of bleeding will take place. If the thickness is very less, then less bleeding will take place. So it depends on that. But approximately uh, the bleeding exists for 3 to 5 days. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.